Oh, oh, well, after all the things I've been through, I still have joy, my Lord, I still have joy. You know I still have joy After all the things I've been through I still have joy I still have peace My Lord, I still have peace After all the things I've been through I still have peace Good morning Brother Donald Nelson on our call to worship. Let me begin our service by welcoming and greeting any of our visiting family, visiting friends that we might have with us. You are surely our honored guest. We had Brother D'Amico and Brother Stephen with us this morning in our Bible study. And so we want to certainly want to welcome and, and, and be gracious with any, any other visiting guests and friends that we might have. We'll later acknowledge you and give you an opportunity to make yourself known to us. Give these announcements and prayer requests. Attention Lady Caroline Cruz attendees. Please see Sister Dora Smith at the front of the auditorium immediately following our morning service. If you have not received your cruise tickets, you're gonna need those tickets. The cruise is scheduled for this Saturday, August 10th. The arrival time is 9 o'clock a.m. Boarding time is 10 o'clock a.m. And the sailing time is 11 o'clock a.m. They'll be returning to the dock at 1 o'clock p.m. You must be on time to sail. There'll be no refunds issued. Concerning our seniors banquet hosted by the North Hill Church of Christ in Akron, it's Saturday, August 17th, from 3 o'clock p.m. until 3 till 5.30 p.m. That location is Higher Middle School, 2385 Wedgwood Drive, Akron, Ohio, 44312, and that's to be hosted by the North Hill Church of Christ. And we want to greet all our seniors who will be there with us. North Hill Church of Christ Gospel Meeting begins on Sunday, August 18th through Wednesday, August 21st. The guest speaker is Brother Olu Shabazz from the Harlem Church of Christ. Sunday morning service is at 1045 a.m. Afternoon worship begins at 4 o'clock p.m. And weekly service Monday through Wednesday is at 7 o'clock p.m. These schedules will also be posted on the bulletin board. Our next closed giveaway is Saturday, August 17th, from 10 o'clock a.m. until noon. The next food giveaway is scheduled for Tuesday, August 20th, from 10 o'clock a.m. until noon. We are asked and encouraged to please keep in our prayers, Brother and Sister McLean. Prayer request for the Hicks family. Brother Hicks is traveling with his family in Michigan. And Sister Hicks, he, she, they're visiting with Sister Hicks' sister, who's not well. Continued prayers for Sister Beverly Hood, who's with us this morning, thank God. Prayers for Sister Emma Brown and family, and for Sister Ruth Wade and family. Sister Ruth Wade made it back to us. Also remembering in prayer, Sister Nicole Bird, Sister Peggy Jackson, Brother Marcus Wayne. Brother Marcus is with us this morning, thank God. Brother Carlson Pope and Brother Kenneth Wheeler. Prayer requests for traveling grace for the Hicks family, the McHenry family and the Slade family, and prayers for the Winston family as well as for those who are traveling. Prayers for Sister Andressa Crouch who will be re relocating to the Detroit, Michigan area. And so we'll get Bill, if we haven't already, we, we wanna serve Sister Crouch with some suggestions on where on, on worship edifices also in that area. Our continued prayers are requested for all the bereaved families and the loss of their loved ones and for all the caregivers. And once again, welcome to our visiting guests and friends. On our roster this morning, we have myself, Donald Nelson, called to worship. Song leader, Brother Greg Shields. Meditation will be Brother Bruce Johnson. Prayer request, Brother Richard Barnes II. Our sermon will be coming from our minister, Brother Terrence McLean. Responses will be from myself also, we'll take care of that. Communion service, Brother Ray Knight. <coughs> Offering, Brother Donald Nelson. And our benediction prayer be Brother Justin Shields. 
Surely this, will be, this is a day that the Lord has made for us. Psalms 100 Division. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Let us go to God in prayer. Bountiful and blessed God, our Father, we thank you so heartily for your causing us to be alive and part of this worship service today. We thank you, Lord, for choosing, selecting us, preferring us, causing us to come together on the first day of the week to worship and serve you. So, Lord, we pray that our prayers and, and our offerings and our messaging and our reading and studying of your scriptures, even with our communion with your Son, will all be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. All the things we do, Lord, is dedicated to you and giving thanks unto you for, for our salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the members of our family who are, who are sick and, 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 and engaged with illnesses. We just pray for Sister McLean. We pray for the members who, are, who are, have, been, have been in the hospital and now are at home once again. We just pray for Sister Nicole Bird. We pray for Brother Hicks and his family and, and, and the illness in, 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 to his sister-in-law. Bless us, Lord. Keep us safe. You are the master physician. You have all healing in your hands. And we just pray that we'll be worthy of your graces and your blessings. Bless our purses. Bless our worship service. Bless us this day as we engage in singing and praying unto you. Help us now, Lord, in Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to suggest that we get a songbook or we just prepare to sing along with Brother Greg. It's on the monitor. All right, all right. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> hey, let's go that way, okay? Let's, let, let, let's go that way. I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright. And skies ever bright. Where all who believe the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way I'm going that way And Jesus the Savior I adore Is with me each day I'm clinging to Him and never to stray and you're singing his praises all day long i'm going that way is a glorious new i tell all and sing as onward i go that those who are still astray in Savior may know, Savior may know. I want them to sing His praise above some beautiful day, beautiful day, for glory to Him who died for me. I'm going that way. 
Till I'm going that way. Going that way. Hey, I'm going that way. Going that way. Hey, and Jesus the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Is with me each day. Hey, I'm clinging to Him. Man never to stray, yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way, I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory and land. And glory at last. And oh, I believe that when we meet, well done, he will say. Well done, he will say. Hey, for trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Hey, I'm going that way. Hey, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Hey, and Jesus the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Is with me each day. Hey, I'm clinging to Him. Oh, and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. This next selection is going to be the Glory Land way, very familiar to, to, to many. Um, after that, we're going to have a meditation, scripture reading, and prayer. Meditation, scripture reading, and prayer. You have it? Let us sing. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way, yeah. I'm in the glory land way. You know I'm telling the world that Jesus saves today. For I'm in the glory land way. You know that I'm in the glory land way. My Lord, I'm in the glory land way. You know heaven is nearer and the way grow is clearer for I'm in the glory land way. And listen to the call of the gospel call today for I'm in the glory land way why don't those wonders come home oh hasten to obey for I'm in the glory land way you know that I'm in the glory land way my Lord, I'm in the glory land way. You know that heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land way. And onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. And soon I shall see him in that home above. For I'm in the glory land way. Hey, my Lord, I'm in the glory land way. 
You knew that I'm in the glory land away. My Lord, heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land and way. meditation and scripture reading. Today's meditation will be taken from the book of 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 9. And it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth God. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. This morning, scripture reading, I'm taken from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 14, verses 1 through 15. 2 Chronicles 14, verses 1 through 15. And it reads, So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days, in the, the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break them down, the images, and cut down the groves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and the commandments. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, and make them about them walls, and towers, gates, and bars, while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he hath given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bare targets and spears out the Ju and spears out of Judah three thousand thousand, and out of Benjamin that bare shields and drew bows, two hundred and four score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them. Zerah, the Ethiopian, with an host of a thousand thousand, and, th and three thousand chariots, and three hundred chariots, and came unto Marisha. And Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha, for Marisha. And Asa carried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rest on thee. And in, thy, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the, smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them out of Gerar. And the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host. And they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities round about Gerar. And the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. And they smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance. 
and returned to Jerusalem. I read to you from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 14, verses 1 through 15. May the Lord add a blessing to all those who hear, understand, and are obedient to his holy and divine word. Now, please, if you will, direct your hearts that we might be led in prayer with Brother Richard Barnes II. <clears throat> Oh, when I feel so sad, why does my heart feel so glad? Why does my soul feel so happy and gay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When all around me burdens roll, yet I'm not worried at all. For when I pray, a King Jesus will roll my burdens away. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for another glorious morning. We thank you for beautiful sunshine that's not too hot burning our skin. We thank you for bringing us all here safely, here to worship you and give you the praise you deserve, Lord. Lord, please touch our hearts right now as we're all going through different things. Some of us are feeling happy. Some of us are feeling worried. Some of us are feeling sad. Some of us have pain in our body right now that's shooting through, and we're just trying to make it on, Lord. Um, we pray that you touch our hearts but touch our minds. Help us not to dwell on the things that are distracting us from you. But help us to give them over to you in this service. Um, help us to focus on what you want us to learn today, Lord. Help us to focus on greeting each other and sharing love, the love that you give us. We're praying for our minister this morning as he comes shortly to speak the word. Please help him remember everything that he studied. Help him as well with distractions around me trying to get to him outside, inside, no matter where it is. Help him to preach what you want him to tell us that will help us get closer to you. Help us to build that relationship with you, not just the checklist, but the relationship to where we get to know you, get to love you, know your voice, and knowing how you guide us through life. Please be with us for the rest of the service. Please keep us encouraged and uplifted because you are good, God. You are always good all the time. And no matter what, we know that we have joy in our hearts and the confidence of knowing that you'll make a way out of no way and that you are good all the time. And we thank you, Lord. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After the next song, we'll hear from our minister, brother, Brother McLean. <clears throat> I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Well, I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Praise his holy name. Well, he's my rock. My rock, my rock, my sword and shield. Uh, he's the wheel. He's the wheel in the middle of the way. You know he'll never, he'll never, never let just a jewel, just a jewel I have found Hallelujah, hallelujah Well, I love to praise His name Singing hallelujah, hallelujah Well, I love to praise His name We're singing hallelujah 
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, well, I love to praise his name. Oh, 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 I love to praise his holy name. Well, he's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my rock, my sword and shield. Oh, he's the wind. Just a joke, just a joke that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Well, I love to praise His name. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I love to praise His name. We're singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. we hear how I love to praise in that. Oh, 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 I love to praise in that. He's just a joke, a joke that I have found. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise him. Keep singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise him. Uh, I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to praise him, oh, 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 oh I love to My sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And I know he'll, he'll never. You can't say that about a lot of folk, but I know he'll never let me down. He's just a jewel that I have found. We are thankful that God Almighty has allowed all of us the privilege and the opportunity to come together and to worship God in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is in God that we move and live and have our very being and because of his amazing grace, and it's amazing grace because he is an amazing God, because of his amazing grace we have the hope of eternal life. We are thankful for the presence of each of you who have come to worship God in spirit and in truth. We thank all of our brethren who have led us in various aspects of worship up to this point. Others will be leading us in other aspects of worship following the message. Thank you for your willingness to let God use you. And thank you for you as individuals who have come to declare what God is worth in in your life. God is good all the time, and and all the time God is is, is good. Sister McLean's doing better. Praise the Lord. Uh, so y'all might be in trouble today. I got a little energy, and uh, Paul preached till midnight. <laughs> 
Uh, I'll be here by myself, I guess, Justin, if I preach till midnight. But thank you for your prayers for, for Sister McLean, and prayerfully she'll be able to join us shortly. And for those of you who are visiting with us and are not members of the Church of Christ, thank you. Thank you for being here. We want you to know we are people who love the Lord, and we endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We believe there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in us all. And if you have any questions about anything that you see, hear, or experience, please don't hesitate to ask us. Peter says, we're to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and be ready always to give an answer to everyone that asks us a reason of the faith that is within us with meekness and with fear and that we are ready to do. For those of you who are watching live on Facebook or live on YouTube, thank you for joining us, especially those who are not yet members of the body of, of Christ. Our prayer is that as we prepare to go into God's word, that God will always get the glory, that Jesus Christ will always be exalted, that saints of God will always be built up in the most holy and precious faith, and that those who are not Christians will be pricked in their hearts by the preaching of the word of, of God. So open your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 1 through, through 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 1 through 15. And if you have it, say amen. amen. If you are not there yet, say wait. Okay. We are all there. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 1 says, So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest. And he had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, let us build these cities and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he hath given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bare targets and spears out of Judah 300,000, and out of Benjamin that bare shields and drew bows 204 score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them Zira the Ethiopian with an host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto Marisha. Then Asa went out against them and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephathah at Marisha. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerah, 
and the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host and they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities round about Gera. For the fear of the Lord came upon them and they spoiled all the cities for there was exceeding much spoil in them. They smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance and return to Jerusalem. From this entire chapter, I want to speak to us from the subject, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Brother Beeman said we need it. I keep telling you I have these little lives, Brother Beeman, but I hear you, I hear you. Lord, help us. Pray with me. All wise and all merciful Father, we praise you for who you are. We thank you that we are your children. We are a part of your family. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And our prayer is that all that we have done in worship up to this point has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, I pray that as I proclaim your word, I will hide in the shadow of the cross. I humble myself before you and ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. May my mouth be your mouthpiece. May the message be your message. May I give you all the glory. May I lift up Jesus the Christ so that men and women, boys and girls, might be drawn to him and his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for our sins. May those who are your children be strengthened, encouraged, and built up in the most holy and precious faith. And Father, I pray that those who are not yet Christians will be pricked in their hearts. And when we stand to sing the song of invitation, they will walk down this aisle, confess with the mouth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be buried in water for the remission of their sins and arise to walk in the newness of life. Father, bless all of our sick and shut in. Bless all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones and thank you for the healings you've already given. Thank you for your healing touch on my beloved wife. Continue to strengthen and keep her in your loving care. Now use me mightily at, at this hour and this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, help us. When we look in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, we are reminded of the shattering saga of God's people during a divided kingdom and the heartbreak that it has brought. After the exciting and adventurous, industrious and thrilling reign of Solomon, there was a severing of God's people. And although he was granted wisdom beyond years and unequaled unequal, by any mortal, Solomon's tragic idolatry would haunt the kingdom for many centuries to come. The Lord would not allow Solomon to witness the division during his lifetime. But the prophetic promise was given and the relevant record is found in 1 Kings chapter 11 Verse 28 through 32, when the record says, And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way and he had clad himself with a new garment and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee 10 pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to thee. 
But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Jeroboam, a former servant of Solomon, would become king to ten of the tribes in the north because they had forsaken the Lord and they worshipped idol gods. But even with this prophecy, Jeroboam was forced into Egypt for a time. And when Solomon died, his son named Rehoboam became king in Judah. And now with Solomon dead and Rehoboam on the throne, Jeroboam came out of Egypt and he asked for support. But Rehoboam refused to lift the burden of his brethren. And the Bible says instead of heeding the counsel of the old men, he took the counsel of the young men and threatened to chastise them with scorpions. All of this was done for the unfolding of God's prophecy in 2 Chronicles chapter 10 and verse number 15. This incident caused Jeroboam and Israel to revolt and now the kingdom was divided in every meaningful way. Jeroboam would eventually lead Israel into sin and remove the Levites and the priests from their functions. But neither would Rehoboam do any better in the south. The scripture says in 2 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse number 14, and he did evil because he prepared not his heart yes, sir. Yes, sir. to seek the Lord. Rehoboam's son Abijah reigned after him and he renewed the conflict with his father's enemy Jeroboam. Abijah and Jeroboam meet against each other in war and before this battle ensued, Abijah stood upon a mountain and made a remarkable speech accurately depicting the condition of the times. He scolds Jeroboam for neglecting the revealed word of God and the worship of God, but then he also describes the faith of Judah. He says, the Lord is our God. The sons of Aaron offer the sacrifices every morning and every evening. Abijah is able to say, God is our captain and God is with us. But the truth did not deter Jeroboam. He sent a sudden and swift ambushment before and behind Abijah and Judah in chapter 13 and verse 13. But when Abijah saw they were surrounded by the enemy, the Bible says they cried unto the Lord, the priest sounded the alarm, and the men of Judah shouted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then in verse 18 of chapter 13, the book says it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. They prevailed because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. At this point, things are great in Judah. Eventually, Abijah dies. His son Asa becomes king in Judah. Asa is the fifth generation from David. He has lived as a prince. He has enjoyed a life of privilege. He has received the finest education. He has tasted the delicious delights from the king's table. He has a historical genealogy of both great faith and great failure. Asa, without doubt, was groomed to lead great men. Asa was conditioned and trained for military involvement. Asa would eventually end in disappointment. But now in the beginning of his reign, Asa is ambitious, he is determined, and he is dedicated. Rest characterizes his reign. The text says, in his days the land was quiet ten years. Asa maximized this time of rest as if he knew there would one day come a day of chaos and testing. We learn at least one great lesson from Asa's life. And that is that you and I need the Lord's help in order to succeed. Whenever Asa relied on God, he found victory. But whenever Asa depended on anyone or anything other than the Lord, he suffered defeat. Later in his life, when he was threatened by Basha, king of Israel, Asa asked Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, for help. In fact, Asa gave Ben-Hadad treasures from the house of the Lord as payment. 
The Lord rebuked Asa, and in his old age, he was diseased in his feet until it was exceeding great. But even then, Asa would not seek the Lord, but rather the physician. Sounds like some of us. I stop by today to remind you that we need the Lord. Revival is a call to renew our faith and our commitment to the Lord. In order to convert the corrupt and save the sinner, we need the Lord's help. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to rise from the gutter to glory. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to reach the unreachable and obtain the unobtainable. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to transform the terrible and restore the rebels. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to break barriers and lift loads. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to withstand the winds and wipe away our worries. When we have the Lord's help, we are able to eliminate egotism and annihilate arrogance. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to achieve the unachievable and perform the unbelievable. When we have the Lord's help, we're able to put aside the past and stand against Satan. God's help is the key to our success. Our endeavors will only produce significance and success with God's help. So the first thing that I want to get out of this text in verse 1 through 5 of 2 Chronicles chapter 14, there had to be the purging. The purging. And I'm not talking about those movies you all have been paying for. I'm talking about a real purging, a spiritual purging. In order to ensure the Lord's guilt, we must do some purging. Thank you, Brother Greg, because nobody else said amen. We cannot anticipate God's help unless we are willing to do some personal purging. The Lord wants to work through some holy vessels. Paul put it this way. In Philippians 3 and verse 8, he said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. There must be a removing of ruin. There must be a taking off of treachery. There must be a disrobing of unrighteousness. There must be cleaning out of our closets. There must be a renewing of our minds. There must be a lying down of hindrances before they can be a hand of help. During these 10 years of quiet, Asa led the people in a national purging. Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. Asa measured his life decisions under the all-seeing eyes of the Lord his God. Asa realized nothing is hidden from he who sees everything. In Proverbs 15 verse 3, the wise man said, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are every place beholding both the evil and the good. As I preached to you last Lord's Day, the Lord has everyone under divine surveillance. There's no hiding place. There's no concealment. There's no blind spot. Asa was a worshiper of the Lord his God. He had a personal sense of accountability to the Lord his God. Asa had no other God. The first command of the Decalogue, what people call the Ten Commandments, God said this to Israel in Exodus 20, verse 2 and 3. He says that, behold, that I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Asa was committed to the Lord. Asa was determined to please the Lord. Asa had no other gods before him. Asa 
act like a man who remembered the warnings of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 18 that said, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy father. Asa purged the place. It says he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and he break down the images and he cut down the groves. These idolatrous practices of heathen worship had become present during the reign of Solomon and had continued without interruption. Listen to me very closely. The longevity of a thing does not necessarily imply its rightness. Okay, I'm going to look over here because I'm not getting too many smiles over here. The longevity of a thing does not necessarily imply its rightness. Just because people have practiced a thing for many years does not automatically stamp it with heaven's sanction. Just because a person has been giving 1% to 3% for 10 years doesn't mean it's right. Just because you've been observing the Lord's Supper once a month all your life doesn't make it right. And just because you've been using instrumental music in your worship of God all your life doesn't make it right. Asa further demonstrates his commitment to the Mosaic tradition and in Deuteronomy 7 verse 5 and 6 the Lord gave clear instructions. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. In the next verse we have a reason that God gave this command Unlike us, God always gives us a reason. He never calls us to act arbitrarily. He said, the reason I want you to do this is for you are a holy people under the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Their special relationship with the Lord was the catalyst for taking away the altars of the strange gods, the high places, the images, and the groves. Listen to me very carefully. We who are members of the body of Christ in 2024, we are the church of God, the church of Christ, and we are the Israel of God, according to Galatians 6 and verse 16. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, The church is now the special people of God. The church is the holy people of God. Peter, in 1 Peter 1 verse 15 said, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. The church... That you and I, not this building, not these pews, not this carpet, not this brick and mortar, not these windows, not these lights, but you and I, the church, must lay aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies, and all evil speakings. I knew I wouldn't get a lot of amens on that one. In a metaphorical way, we must take away the altars of the strange gods among us. Yes, sir. We must take away the altars of self-centeredness. We must take away the altars of lukewarmness. We must take away the altars of foolishness. We must take away the altars of stubbornness. We must take away the altars of covetousness. We must take away the altars of faithlessness. But we also need to take away some of our high places. A high place is an elevated place and the only one to be lifted up is Jesus. 
as John the Baptist says, we must decrease in order for him to increase. Too many saints of God have high places in their own minds. But Paul said, with lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. We need to break the images, cut down the groves. Images and groves are figures or graven types, objects of worship. Asa was committed to purging the land that he removed his own mother from being queen because she had an idol in a grove. Too many saints of God are trying to maintain an image. Amen, lights. Jesus warned against this in Matthew 23, verse 27 and 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. We need to stop trying to project images that are far from who we really are. Some of us look good on the outside. We are dressed up on the outside but messed up on the inside. Some of us look good on the outside. We've done a great job of decorating the exterior. We have mastered the art of accessorizing. But sister, you don't need makeup as much as you need a spiritual makeover. Brother, you don't need a designer suit as much as you need a dedicated heart. We need to break the images and cut down the groves, break and cut down the useless, unprofitable, wasteful, fruitless, and futile images in groves. An image in a grove are something we make to suit our own desires. Asa commanded the people to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to, to, to do the law and the commandment. As a preacher of the gospel, of my Lord Jesus Christ, I want to command you today. I know we don't like that word command, but Paul told Timothy to command the church to do certain things. As a preacher of the gospel, I want to command you today. It's consistent with New Testament teaching. Paul wrote Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 11. These things command and teach. In Titus chapter 2, verse 15, he said, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority and let no man despise thee. Yes, I want to command you to seek the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, Seek him first. The Hebrew term is derash, and it means to tread or frequent to follow for pursuit or serve. We need a search ministry in our lives. We need to seek the Lord every day of our lives. We need to seek the Lord in life and seek the Lord in prayer. We need to seek the Lord in his word. Paul said the Lord is not very far from every one of us. Yes, I want to command you to seek the Lord God of our Father. Seek the Lord that brought Daniel out of den of lions. Seek the Lord that revealed himself to Moses. Seek the Lord that gives living water. Seek the Lord who is able to rescue the perishing and strengthen the weak. Seek the Lord that fed Elijah with the ravens. Seek the Lord that gave sight to the blind and life to the dead. But I also must command you to follow the law and the commandment. Not the law of Moses. But the law and the commandment of Christ. I must command you to walk worthy of your vocation. I must command you to love your neighbor as yourself. I must command you to offer your bodies a living sacrifice. I must command you to submit to one another. I must command you to defend the faith. I must command you to put on the new man. I must command mothers to love their children. I must command fathers to bring up their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. 
I must command children to obey their parents. I must command deacons to serve. I must command elders to shepherd the flock. I must command strange sheep to come back home. I must command weary warriors to stand still. And I openly command by the authority of the word of God. By the authority of God's word, I want to command you to stop murmuring. And start moving. I want to command you to stop bickering and start building. I want to command you to stop procrastinating and start participating. I want to command you to stop grumbling and start giving. I want you to command you to stop complaining and start cooperating. Asa cleaned up all of the surrounding areas. The text says he, he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. Asa purged all the cities of Judah because he wanted the kingdom to be pure. Yes, I unapologetically, unapologetically say to you today, the church is now God's kingdom on earth and we need to purge every area of God's kingdom we need to purge the worship in the kingdom we need to purge the nursery we need to purge the ministries and the meetings we need to purge the membership role we need to purge our hearts and our minds from the past and go forward But after the purge, there was a preparation. In 2 Chronicles 14, verse 6 through 8, whenever there's peace, there can be prosperity. Asa's reign is recognized for the quiet peace. And James said in chapter 3, verse 18, that the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Asa could build and prosper because there was peace. Asa took complete advantage of this peace to build. He prepared for the storm before there was a storm. Asa said, let us build these cities. And it was a group effort. Asa was concerned about the potential dangers of the future. Therefore, he sought to fortify the cities in Judah. Asa said to the people, let us build these cities. Let us make some walls around them and towers and gates and bars while the land is yet before us. In other words, let's redeem the time before the days of evil come. Let us make the most of our present opportunity. Asa was not only concerned with the king's house. Asa was concerned about every citizen residing in the cities of Judah. Asa was concerned about the widows and the orphans. Asa was concerned about those who were weak and defenseless. Asa was able to lead the people in building walls of protection to keep others out. Towers to watch for the enemy. Gates to grant access to those who are welcome and bars to strengthen the gates. The prerequisite to their building and their prosperity was the peace given to them because they had sought the Lord. Listen to me, church. We need to do some building. But before we do any building, there must be some peace. We need to build some walls of protection for our people. We need to set up some watchtowers to look out for dangers. We need to build some gates to grant access to the center. And we need to build some bars to prevent the enemy from breaking through. Asa also had an army of men. He had 300,000 shield and spear carrying men out of Judah. He had 280,000 shield and bow carrying men out of Benjamin. These were mighty men of valor. The Hebrew for mighty men is Gaborah, and it means they were warriors. It's sometimes translated champion or chief or excel or giant or strong man or a valiant man. The church needs an army of men. 
I thank God for the man I have the privilege of already working with, but I believe there's much more in us than we have realized. I believe there are some mighty men among us who have not yet stepped out of the shadows. I believe there are some warriors, some champions, some spiritual giants, and some strong men among us. We need some prayer warriors. We need some men outfitted in the spiritual armor. We need some spiritual champions. We need some men who are not afraid to touch people. We need some men who are not afraid to shed a tear with a hurting. We need some men who are go-getters. We need some men who are not afraid to love and respect other men. We need some men who will show up for worship and worship when they show up. We need some men who aren't afraid to charge a hill. The Lord can use a good man. And then my last point in this sermon is yours. He purged, he prepared, and then he prayed. That's verse 9 through 15. Asa's wisdom and initiative paid off because no sooner than they had prepared the city and strengthened the army, there arose a problem. The text says, and there came out against them Zira the Ethiopian with a host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto Merishah. Then Asa went out against them and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zaphatha at Merishah. I want you to understand the magnitude of Asa's problem. Asa has an army of 580,000 men. The New King James says Zira has a million men and 300 chariots. Asa is outnumbered almost two to one. Furthermore, 300 chariots would be like having an armored tank division. You see, no matter how well you prepare, there will be some things you are not prepared to handle. Asa is in an impossible situation. There's no way he can win this battle. Asa has done his best. Asa has purged the place. Asa has fortified the cities. Asa has strengthened the army. Asa sought the Lord and commanded the people to seek him and to do the law and the commandment. But Asa now has a problem that he cannot solve. Asa has a situation he can't handle. Asa has an enemy he can't defeat. Asa has an obstacle he can't overcome. Asa has a mountain he can't climb, but what should Asa do? Should he panic? Should he surrender? Should he retreat into the fortified cities? Notice what Asa did. The Bible says, and Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest in thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. Asa prayed for the Lord's help. He took his eye from his enemy. And he looked towards the hills from whence cometh his help. He realized God is a present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, he prayed to the Lord his God. Yes, yes. Asa's theological understanding erupts in this prayer. Asa says, Lord, is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. I don't want you to miss that today. Asa is saying there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Asa believes that with God all things are possible. Asa recognizes his weakness, but more importantly, he recognizes God's strength. Asa believes there's nothing too big or small for the Lord, and therefore, whether his problem is a teenage son on drugs or a broke-down car, there's nothing too big or too small for the Lord. 
the Lord is able to help us with the big things as well as with the small things. Most of us at least have enough sense to turn toward God for the big things, but our problem is the small things. Well, Brother McLean, what are the small things? Glad you asked. Small things are things we are deceived into thinking that we have sufficiency to handle ourselves without relying on the Lord. But tell me, what thing, big or small, can you do without the Lord? None. Based on Asa's theological understanding of God, he makes a request. Asa prays, help us, O Lord our God. Asa believes God is active in his world and in the universe. And I stop by to remind every single one of you, I know we live in 2024, but I still believe God is active not only in my life, but in this world. Asa makes a divine emergency call. Asa calls heavens 911. Asa asks the Lord to help us. In Hebrew, it means to surround or to protect or to aid us. Asa is asking God to surround them with a shield of protection. But notice Asa does not suggest to the Lord on how to help. Don't concern yourself with how God helps you. Just make sure you ask God to help you. At this point, Asa says, for we rest on thee and in thy name. We go against this multitude. In other words, we're not resting on our spears. We're not resting on our fortified cities. We are not resting on our shields. We are not resting on our bows. Lord, we are resting on you. We have gone out against this multitude in your name because we don't want them to take the land you gave us. We don't want them to ruin your land with idolatry. And Asa says, O Lord, thou art our God. Let no man prevail against thee. Lord, you are our victory. Lord, you are our master. Don't let any man prevail against you. Lord, this is your battle. Lord, this is your war. Lord, don't let man win. Now, I don't know about you, but I realize we are still engaged in warfare. Living in this country and the political climate we find ourselves in right now and in the religious confusion and division that's running rampant in our country, we need to say, Lord, help us. The Lord answered Asa's 50-word prayer. And the Lord smote the Ethiopians, so they began to flee. Asa and the people pursued them and overthrew them to the point of no recovery. They smote this host and took much spoil and returned to Jerusalem. I don't know about you, but I want victory in this life. I can't speak for you, but I need the Lord's help. John said, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Paul said, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I need his help in the time of heartache. I need his help in the time of disappointment. I need his help in the time of trouble. I need his help because God is in the helping business. He helped a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. He helped a man of the pool of Bethsaida. He helped ten lepers. He helped blind Bartimaeus. He helped Jairus' daughter. He helped the Syrophoenician's daughter. He helped an infirm woman. He helped the Roman centurion's servant. He helped the nobleman's son. He helped the hungry. He helped the thirsty. He helped the brokenhearted. He helped the weary. He helped Elijah out on Mount Carmel. He helped the indebted widow. He helped David defeat Goliath. He helped Hezekiah lived for 15 more years. He helped Joshua bring down Jericho. He helped Abraham become a mighty nation. He helped Paul and Silas while in prison. He helped Peter preach the gospel. He helped Thomas through his unbelief. He helped Daniel in the lion's den. But I'm here to tell you, he helps me too. And he'll help you too. And despite all that is going on around about us, 
Despite what we see in politics, despite what we see in this country, despite what we see in religion, I want you to know that I believe that God is still just as real today as he was way back in the Old Testament. That God is just as real today as he was in the New Testament. I believe that the church has just as much power now as we had in the first century. But the question is, what are you and I going to do to access that power? Lord, help us. Our country has lost its way. Lord, help us. Religion in general has lost its way. Lord, help us. And now I've got to add to that. Churches of Christ are losing their way. Lord, help us. I still believe Jesus, when he said, upon this rock, upon this rock, I I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means I'm going to die, go down in the Hadean world, and I'm coming back from the dead to build my church. Keep your cotton-picking hands off my church. It ain't yours and it ain't mine, it's his. And he's the head of it. And he will tell you what to do to get in it. He will tell you how to live after you get in it. And he will tell you how to worship when you're in it. Because it's his. If you're here today and you're not a child of God. And there's only one way you can become a child of God. If you obey from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered unto you. You've heard the truth today. And Jesus is the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Can I tell you a little secret, Brother Nate? I will obey anybody who dies and gets up from the dead. I may not always understand why he tells me what to do, but I'm going to obey him. And nobody should be a member of any religious group where the head is dead. Y'all, y'all look at me. I wouldn't even be a member of the Catholic Church because when the Pope dies, now I want y'all to think about this. When the Pope dies, they got to get all the cardinals to come over to Rome and then they got to take a vote on who the next Pope is. And when they take their vote, he becomes the Pope. Now, all of a sudden, he speaks ex cathedra. That means he speaks for God. Y'all just voted on him. That ain't no different than the children of Israel in the wilderness when they made the golden calf. And then Aaron said, when the calf came out, now this be your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. How in the world can that be your God when you just made it? There's only one God. God said that I will not give my glory to any. You need to believe that he sent his son to die on that cross. And he died for you. Because you are a sinner. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he said in John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. And where I am, you cannot come. You need to believe that he lived, died, and was buried, got up from the dead, and went back to heavens on the right end of God, and one day is coming back again. 
you need to be willing to repent of your sins. Change your mind, change your will, change your actions. Acts 17 and 30 said, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at. God used to wink at our ignorance. You remember when you were growing up and some folk were acting up and somebody would invariably say they don't know no better? God no longer says they don't know no better. The times of this ignorance I used to wink at, but now I command all men everywhere to repent. Repent of what? Being ignorant. And then you got to confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. And then you must be baptized, buried in water for the remission of sins, and he arise to walk in the newness of life. Do you need to obey the gospel? Do you need prayer as a child of God? Do you need to be restored in your walk with God? Will you come right now as we together stand and sing? Restore my spirit, Lord, I need Restore my heart, heart is weary Please help me Dear Lord, where I stand and in need of more strength from your word, renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul, revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul, stir my desire, you I desire to work in your full will and light in my heart, dear God. Your zeal, a grown cold, renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul, renew my courage, Lord. In need is restored. My cup, My cup is, is empty. empty. Refill it, it dear Lord. Yes, and a replay all doubts and, and fear, fear with faith. So bold. My love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Amen. We're thankful to God for blessing all of us with the privilege and the opportunity uh, to come together and to worship him in spirit and in truth. I am thankful that God has allowed me once again to proclaim his holy and, and divine word. My prayer is that God has been pleased with the message, the motive behind it, the content of the message, uh, the method of its delivery, and that he has gotten all of the glory and that Jesus has been lifted up. And for those of you who are Christians, I hope you are encouraged and built up in the most holy and precious faith. And if you are not a Christian, my prayers, the Holy Spirit will take the word you've heard, touch your heart, and you will search the scriptures to see whether those things are so that we have shared with you on this day. For all of you who are Christians, remember to do something that only a Christian would do. And whether you're Christian or not, remember God loves you, Jesus died for you, I love you, and I am your servant for Jesus' sake. Church, say amen. Amen. Please say amen again. Lord, help us. We want to thank Brother McLean for that message this morning. We have these responses. Sister Ebony Beckwith is asking for prayer. Prayers upon my family and our daily journey following Christ. Me and my co-workers, Melissa Jarvis, and the issues she is facing. May God work through us and and give me strength daily. Thank you for your prayers and continue your prayers. Sister Marilyn Stewart is responding for Sister Kenyatta Wesley, who's in the area where the wildfires are. Sister Wesley is asking for prayer. We pray for her, and we certainly pray with her. Sister Ruth Wade is asking for prayer. Keep me in prayer for my health, my grandson, Vincent Toller, 
to Elijah Toller, also for Jerome Toller. Keep me in prayer for my health. Ask your brother Alfred Smith, and also for my brother Alfred Smith in New Jersey, and my sister Gracie King, Kearney is in Alabama, and for the, the all, our, all our family, they ask for, for strength and encouragement and prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Please, let's pray together. God, we come before your mighty throne of grace, asking for your help. Help us, Lord. We always need you. We always surrender to your blessed care and keeping. You are God, and you are all, all powerful. We pray, Lord, on behalf of members of the family who are sick and members who are well and, and engaging with, with the doctors and with, and with the, the, physical, the medical system. And we just pray, Lord, for, be, for saving us and for redeeming us. Some of our family members are asking for respected prayer. Sister Marilyn Stewart is asking on behalf of Sister Kenyatta Wesley. Sister Wesley is in the area where, in California where they're having wildfires. We pray for her and we pray with her. We pray that through Sister Wesley's prayers also that we can pray with her and for her and she can be strengthened. She asks prayers for her coworkers, Melissa Jarvis and the issues, and we just pray that you will be our God and you will be all wise and powerful. Sister Wade asks prayers consistently, Lord, we always, ask, we always pray to you and we always pray for you on behalf of Sister Wade. She has prayers for her, for Benson and for Elijah. She has prayers for her brother, Alfred Smith, and her sister, Gracie King. So, Lord, upon the message, upon our appeal and our, our reaching up and reaching out to you, Lord, we say, God, help us. We need your help. We need your strength. We need your love. We, uh, we on behalf of our family members, on behalf of our entire congregation, bless us, Lord. Cause us to be children who are obedient to your, to your worthy cause. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 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 We come to that part of our service now where uh, we commune with, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, there were communion packets out, uh, out front and in the, in the rear of the auditorium. If you didn't get a communion packet, just raise your hand right now and we'll, uh, we'll get one to you. If you didn't get one, everybody got one? Perfect. <clears throat> Sing a verse of this song. <clears throat> Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried where there to my heart was that blood We're singing glory to his name Hallelujah, glory to his name. We're singing glory to his name. And with there to my heart was that blood. We're singing glory to his name. Our scripture for communion will be taken from the book of Matthew, 27th chapter. I'll begin with the first verse. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. Yes. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus said to them, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you hear not how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. 
Now at that feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, have nothing to do with that just man. For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus, who was called Christ? They all said to him, let him be crucified. I read to you in part some of the events leading up to the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is with continued reverence that we approach your throne of grace, thanking you for the privilege to commune with the saints. In recognition of the supreme sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, we ask that you bless this unleavened bread, which commemorates his broken body, and the fruit of the vine, which commemorates his shed blood. We pray that our collective preparation for this communion service is pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. I know it was the blood I know it was the blood I know it was the blood for me One day when I was lost He died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I knew it was the blood for me. He's coming back again. Uh, he's coming back again. Uh, he's coming back again for me. Hey, one day when I was lost, uh, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. We've come to that time in the service where we are commanded to give back a portion of our earnings to the Lord. God commands us, I say again, Apostle Paul writes upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by in store and give, give as God has prospered you. I think Brother McLean mentioned that he gave us in our lesson this morning against covetousness. One's life does not commit, consist of material, of things, but we give as God has prospered us. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, 
Scripture records, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap also sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of you give, let each one of us give, as we purpose in our heart. And let's go to God in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, once again, we come before your mighty throne of grace, thanking you for the willingness and your, our ability to earn wealth, to accumulate material goods. Now we share by your commandment. We give them back to you, Lord. We give it all to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. To all of our guests, we are thankful for, for your presence uh, with us, that you have joined us for worship. I don't normally get the privilege of acknowledging the guests, but Brother Donald thought I might get a kick out of doing it on today. Uh, I do have two cards that have been given to me, D'Amico Ryans and Stephen, is that Edagoki? Yes, sir. Did I say it correctly? Okay, at a go uh, Would you two gentlemen stand? I just want the congregation to see. They were here for Sunday school on, on this morning. And I did, not know, I did not know who they were. And I'm just steady talking about winning teams and losing teams. And I noticed D'Amico was laughing. I never understood until I found out who he was why he was laughing. He is the head coach of the Houston Texans NFL football team, who is a And I said this to both of them, Brother Bentley. Uh, I said to them in between Sunday school and morning worship once I found out who he was, that I really appreciated, I think they were here for the Hall of Fame football game on Thursday, it was Thursday, and they stayed around to be able to share with us Amen. in worship. Amen. They wanted to make sure they worship Amen. the Lord on the first day of the week. They're Amen. members of the Church of Christ in Houston, Texas area. And D'Amico, you live in Sugar Land. I think that's where Brother Gerald Lee's congregation is in Sugar Land itself. But uh, thank you all so much for, for coming and, and, and being with us. Uh, do you play the Lions this year? You do. <laughs> Uh, we have a unique situation here at the University Church of Christ. Yeah. I'm a Wolverine. <laughs> and which means I'm a diehard Lions fan as well. Now I can root for you and the Texans any other game. But I think I might have to root a little bit for the Lions. But being a faithful member of the church and having achieved your success, we're very proud of you, very thankful to God for you, and hope that you'll continue to keep the faith and let God direct your, prayer, uh, your life. And we want you to be successful, except against our team. <laughs> uh, we're also glad to have home. I, I say home. I know he went home to India. Print it. Stand up so. Uh, <laughs> He, he went home to India for the summer. He's a student at Case Western University. You're into your second year now, right? But ever since his first year, he, he found a congregation. Yes. Yes. And his first time coming, he walked here once he found out where the church was. And then some of the brethren provided rides for him. But we're glad to have you back. Uh, you're looking young and handsome and prosperous. I got a little tan there, it looks like to me. But God bless you, Prentice. We're glad to have you back. And are there any other visitors to my right that we don't have cards for? Any visitors to my right, your left? If not, any visitors to my left and your right that I don't have cards for? Well, if you are visiting but you feel like you're at home, we want you to know that you, you are certainly welcome uh, to continue to worship with us. And if you have any questions about anything that we have said or done, uh, please don't hesitate to ask us. We love God, we love each other, and we certainly love you, you as well. Uh, 
Sister McLean is home, so we thank God for that and continue to keep her uh, in, in prayer. If there's, uh, if there's nothing else, let's be standing so we can be, dis be dismissed. And again, we thank all the visitors for coming, but um, I know that you guys applaud for Brother, Brother D'Amico, if you remember the Browns' last game last year, the very last game last year. <clears throat> I'm so glad that my Jesus lifted me. You know that I'm so glad that my Jesus lifted me. You know that I'm so glad that my Jesus lifted me. We're singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Oh, well, Satan had me by, but my Jesus lifted me. You know that sin had me by, but my Jesus lifted me. You know that sin had me by, but my Jesus lifted me. Oh, we're singing glory. Hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to arrive here safely. Thank you for allowing us to have great weather for today. Thank you for allowing us to hear this wonderful message by Brother Terrence McLean. Please help us to have a safe trip home and please help us to have a good good week at our schools and at our jobs and please pray for people to be able to be safe and to be good christians in jesus name as we are amen, amen. amen.